So first of all, I would like to thank Barbara for this great meeting and the kind invitation to be here. Uh, I'm going to review so what uh, is known about uh, cerebral amyloid angiopathy, starting from the molecular classification. So it's not working. This. So maybe it's the, it's the black. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is a test. Uh, uh, the molecular classification. <coughs> Uh, of this condition, so um, many different proteins, as you see, um, can be the cause of CAA. So uh, some of these proteins so, uh, are a very rare cause of CAA, uh, and in most instances, th these are very rare, rare genetic condition. For instance, cystatin C for uh, uh, cerebral uh, amyloid angiopathy, Icelandic type, the prion protein, amyloid angiopathy, uh, which is uh, <coughs> associated with stop code mutation at uh, 145, 163, 226. Uh, the very first stop code mutation <coughs> was defined by uh, Dino Getty and myself, so about 20 years ago. So this is a protein which is uh, uh, anchorless because uh, it's uh, a truncated at residue of 145 and is very soluble and is, is uh, um, uh, precipitated, is, is assemb assembling in vessel walls primarily. So, but uh, we have the pre protein, so, uh, which uh, gives a cerebral amyloidism angiopathy in familial British and Danish dementia, uh, uh, gelsoline, familial amyloidosis Finnish type, transthyretin in meningo cerebral vascular uh, involvement of familial TTR amyloidosis, and immunoglobulin light chain is a sporadic condition which is causing CAA with leukencephalopathy. This is very rare. Uh, by contrast, so amyloid beta CAA is very common, so, and it can be sporadic uh, related to aging, Alzheimer's disease, other conditions such as uh, vascular malformations in the brain, and uh, uh, hereditary, so due to uh, genetic forms of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, so we are going to talk especially on uh, A-beta CAA, and <coughs> this is uh, the prevalence of this condition in the uh, uh, aged, uh, non-demented and demented population. And you can see here that uh, from uh, about 25 to 40 percent of people over 75, 80 years, uh, um, non-demented, so have uh, some kind of CAA in the brain. Uh, of course, uh, uh, if, you, if we uh, score only severe CAA cases, uh, the uh, um, frequency is much less, but it's about from 10 to 30 percent, 25, 30 percent. So it's a very common condition, also severe CAA in non-demented people. Of course, in demented people, th this percentage uh, is much higher. Uh, which are the risk factors? First of all, aging. Aging is uh, the uh, uh, most important, uh, sorry, uh, ah, sorry, aging. But also apolipoprotein E genotype is an important risk factor. And uh, ApoE4 uh, increases the risk of CAA-related lobar intracellular hemorrhage is quite uh, uh, importantly. And the clinical severity is uh, dose-dependent, so it's related to the number of the e epsilon-4 allele. Uh, but also uh, ApoE epsilon-2 is a risk factor. So, uh, this uh, genotype increases the risk of CAA-related lobar uh, intracellular hemorrhages. And uh, the combination of the two alleles uh, uh, result in younger age of first uh, intracellular hemorrhage, greater likelihood of hematoma expansion, poorer clinical outcome, and higher risk of, of early recurrence. Um, it is uh, um, known that ApoE4 and ApoE2 promote uh, uh, intracellular hemorrhage through distinct mechanisms. So uh, basically, uh, uh, APOE4 favors A beta deposition, while APOE2 induces structural changes in amyloid laden vessels, uh, which is more prone to, uh, to uh, ruptures and to, to hemorrhages. 
So, which are the clinical sentinel presentation of this condition, so of the sporadic A beta CAA? So, first of all, spontaneous lobar intracellular hemorrhages, um, cognitive impairment uh, uh, post ICH, but also cognitive impairment without symptomatic ICH and transit focal neurological episode. So, in the presence of this, so we have to. Uh, to, to, to uh, study patients uh, uh, to rule out the possibility of A beta CAA. Uh, cognitive impairment is quite uh, not really very specific, but a, a, a very suggesting profile. So, uh, in particular, so there is a, an executive dysfunction, impaired processing speed with relatively preserved episodic memory. So, the uh, important aspect uh, uh, is neuroimaging, particularly MRI, so there, are, there is a number of key MRI signatures. Uh, first of all, multiple strictly robust cerebral microbleeds, cortical superficial siderosis, uh, acute convexi convexity subarachnoid hemorrhage, white matter hyperintensity, particularly in the posterior regions of the brain, enlarged perivascular space in the centrum ovale and cortical microinfarcts. And all this uh, is summarized in this picture, um, um, I would say beautiful picture, so you can see here the lobar hemorrhages, microinfarcts, uh, superficial siderosis, uh, subarachnoid hemorrhages, white matter, uh, hyperintensity, also the uh, enlargement of perivascular space and cerebral microbleeds. Uh, <coughs> uh, the cerebral microbleeds are high positive, uh, pre have a high positive predictive value for CAA even in individuals without uh, ICH presentation. Uh, while uh, uh, the superficial siderosis it has a, a high, is a, a high risk f element for future symptomatic global intracerebral hemorrhage. <coughs> um, to uh, diagnose the CAA related uh, hemorrhages, uh, um, the Boston criteria have been set up and these criteria are based on uh, this classification, so definite CAA, probable CAA, CAA with supporting pathology, so that means clinical data and pathologic tissue, uh, for instance, uh, evacuated uh, um, hematoma or cortical biopsy, demonstrating uh, lobar cortical or subcortical hemorrhage, some degree of CAA in the specimen, and absence of other diagnostic lesions. So, then there is the probable CAA without uh, supporting pathology, but based on MRI or CT, and uh, in this case, uh, you have to find multiple hemorrhages restricted to lower cortical or subcortical regions. Um, also, the cerebellar, uh, cerebellum uh, can be included, uh, or alternatively, a single lower cortical or subcortical hemorrhage and focal or disseminated superficial siderosis. Uh, and then a possible CAA based on clinical data and imaging. Uh, uh, in this case, you have a single lobar cortical or subcortical hemorrhages or focal or disseminated superficial siderosis. <coughs> now, uh, now we have also uh, possible uh, imaging uh, molecular markers. Uh, this is the uh, study that was, was published uh, last year on the um, uh, use of florbetapir pair uh, PET uh, to distinguish CAA-related intracellular hemorrhage from hypertensive intracellular hemorrhage. And you can see here that uh, um, uh, uh, and in, in this study, so, which is based on a very limited uh, number of patients, so, uh, you can uh, distinguish the two conditions with the sensitivity of 100% and the specificity of uh, 89%. So, of course, uh, this investigation have to be uh, extended to many uh, more uh, patients. Uh, now, so which is uh, the topographic distribution of uh, sporadic CAA? Uh, the to to topographic distribution prefers, uh, sorry, uh, the occipital lobe, uh, which is most frequently and severely affected 
uh, uh, region of the brain, and this is followed by frontal temporal parietal lobes. Uh, in, advanced stage, in advanced stages, uh, also the cerebellum can be uh, affected, while basal ganglia, thalam, thalami, uh, white matter, and brainstem are typically spared. Uh, the uh, CAA pathology shows a patchy pattern, so the vessels so, uh, are uh, involved in, in, this, in a discontinuous manner. So there are foci of severely aff affected vessels and other foci with uh, mild or absent a beta deposition. This has been taken into account in cases that uh, are subjected to cortical biopsy uh, because uh, uh, the biopsy may miss a pathology, especially if this is a very small specimen. So it's much better to use, uh, uh, to, to, to perform a larger biopsy than a needle biopsy, for instance. Uh, there are also uh, different pathological subtypes of sporadic CAA. In particular, in particular two sub subtypes have been uh, identified uh, the so-called CA type 1 and CA type 2. Uh, the type 1 uh, focus on involvement of capillaries. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, other vessels, so uh, uh, um, cortical arteries, ar arterials can be involved, but capillaries are the most prominent change. And this is seen, seen most frequently in the occipital lobe, may cause uh, luminal obstruction in the most severe stages of the disease, and is strongly associated with uh, epsilon-4 allele. The type 2 uh, is uh, um, the subtype involving leptomeningeal and cortical arteries, arterioles and rarely veins, uh, and is more associated with uh, the epsilon-2 uh, allele of uh, APOE4. And this is a typical case, so this is one case that uh, uh, came to our attention, and uh, uh, the, this patient died, and you can see here this uh, is uh, um, the occipital lobe immunostain with anti-A beta antibody, and all this immunoreactivity is not plaques, uh, uh, but is just vessels, so because the capillaries were, were really very, very much involved, so you don't see amyloid, pla uh, amyloid plaques here, and of course uh, uh, the, uh, the arteries from the surface to to the white matter and uh, also the leptomeningeal vessel. This was a very severe case of sporadic A beta CAA with type 1 um, uh, subgroup of lesions. But uh, which is the progression of the disease? So uh, initially you have a focal uh, A beta 40 deposition. First of all, uh, the um, uh, A beta species which is involved in uh, uh, amyloid pathology, in uh, um, vessel pathology is, is A beta 40 or shorter species. And uh, you have the deposition in the abluminal aspect of the tunica media surrounding smooth muscle cells. And you have also some involvement of the adventitia, uh, but uh, then progressively you have a pan-mural A beta 40 accumulation and uh, uh, um, regressive changes of the vessel wall and the loss of smooth muscle cell. So in the, <coughs> uh, you can also have infiltration of the surrounding tissue often associated with neolithic changes, as you can see here, for instance. And you can have uh, structures that are plaque-like structures uh, that have been defined by the uh, old German uh, neuropathologist as Trusike and Tartung. <clears throat> and in advanced, uh, advanced stages of the disease, uh, uh, you can see the lamination of the tunica media. So here you have an example. Fibrinoid necrosis and microaneurysm formation, microbleeding, as you can see here, microinfarcts and white matter demyelination, as you can see here. Uh, uh, neuropathologists uh, um, proposed uh, many different uh, <coughs> uh, criteria uh, for scoring CAA and CAA associated vascul uh, vasculopathy, and this is one of the last. Uh, um, uh, papers of, published by Lovett et, et al. Uh, um, two or three years ago, uh, which is based on uh, three, four uh, different scoring and with, uh, uh, um, I mean, focusing on parenchymal CAA, meningeal CAA, capillary CAA, and vasculopathy. Uh, 
Um, and this uh, also um, uh, scoring system in this case was also validated with a good agreement between different neuropathologists. So what happened when you have the progressive deposition of the <coughs> of the uh, A beta uh, in form of amyloid fibers in the vessel wall, in the tunica media, is th you have re really very profound degenerative, degenerative changes uh, and you can see uh, easily, uh, I mean, the uh, uh, changes, important changes in the vessel wall just by using the acting immunistochemistry, acting immunistochemistry in normal vessel is labeling the vessel in this way, but uh, if you uh, have cases of um, CAA um, uh, with advanced changes, uh, you don't see any more any acting, acting in, in the vessel wall. So, uh, and this is a warning for me because, uh, in my opinion, removal of A beta in advanced C CAA can be really very dangerous because the the vessel wall can uh, have a rupture and uh, hemorrhages. So, and this is, of course, uh, I think the uh, neuropathological basis also of the vasogenic edema that we see uh, uh, during uh, many uh, therapeutic uh, attempts with antibodies. Uh, which is the CAA pathophysiology. So, uh, CAA is now regarded as protein elimination failure angiopathy. Uh, so A beta accumulation driven uh, by reduced peptide clearance. So, so you have this increasing accumulation of A beta uh, because of reduced peptide clearance. And uh, which are the most important players uh, are the small vessels uh, that play a major role in the clearance process, uh, both as a site uh, of uh, efflux uh, across the blood brain barrier, but particularly a sites of perivascular drainage of the beta from the interst interstitial fluid to the systemic <coughs> lymphatic circulation. So, and uh, the periarterial drainage of the interstitial fluid relies on vessel pulsation, first of all, and biochemical interaction with basement membranes. So, uh, uh, during aging, so there is a progressive failure of perivascular drainage, and this is combination with specific genotypes, so particularly the, um, the presence of uh, uh, APOE4 and D2 alleles, uh, um, result in trapping of A beta in the perivascular compartment, increased concentration, increased aggregation deposition al along the basement membranes, and then uh, progressively in the vessel wall, stagnation in inter interstitial fluid, and, and, and enlargement of perivascular space in the wi white matter. So this is uh, at present the uh, best model we have for the pathophysiology of CAA. So, but CAA can all, uh, is all, also associated, of course, uh, uh, with genetic forms of um, Alzheimer's disease, and here, uh, you can see the um, uh, A-beta a fragment uh, uh, of the APP in yellow with many different mutations. Some, uh, uh, so I listed the mutation uh, resulting in AD with severe CAA, so this in blue, and some mutation which do not result in an AD phenotype, but rather in a, a, a CAA, pure CAA phenotype without tau pathology and with, without plaques. And the first uh, um, that was discovered so, uh, uh, was the, the uh, so-called Dutch mutation, so where a glutamic acid is, um, is uh, um, there is a, a mutation that uh, is substituted by a glutamine. So and we found in Milan uh, this, this mutation, so glutamic acid to lysine. This is uh, where family investigated also together with Alessandro Padovani, I think. Uh, and, and then there is another mutation uh, with the pure CAA that was described in Pavia. Now, <coughs> Uh, as I say, the, the first mutation was the Dutch mutation. This was uh, investigated, investigated from the biochemical point of view, 
uh, in New York by Blas Frangione group, and the same group uh, found the, uh, the mutation. And I would like to stress that this is the very first mutation identifying the APP gene, so before any other mutation, even associated with Alzheimer's disease. But uh, nobody remembers this. Uh, then, I, of course, everybody was looking at APP in that uh, two exons, so because it was easy uh, and in a short time, so many different uh, mutations related to genetic forms of Alzheimer's disease were found, uh, including the, the London mutation. Any, in any case, <coughs> Um, um, what uh, uh, um, we found is a different mutation of the same codon. So and this was the family, probably, uh, Alessandro, this was a, a family that uh, you were collecting, right, and uh, studying clinically. Uh, one of the members came to our attention, and then he, he died, uh, and uh, uh, we uh, perform autopsy. But uh, first of all, the clinical presentation in this case uh, uh, was multiple stroke, but also minor, minor strokes at uh, uh, age between 40 and 70. So the phenotype was uh, less severe than the, the Dutch mutation indeed, that it has the tendency to uh, present at early age and with very, very, very important stroke episodes. So. And um, uh, this patient also had a mild cognitive impairment. Uh, and this is the pathology. So, uh, of course, uh, the vascular pathology typical of this uh, condition. So, uh, this uh, the MRI scan uh, and the correlate uh, at neuropathology, so the microbleeds. Uh, so, we decided together with Blas Francione group, so I was working there for a while, uh, to uh, investigate more um, uh, in deep uh, the Italian mutation compared to the Dutch mutation uh, because of some differences and indeed the clinical differences uh, ha also had some uh, differences in neuropathology but also some differences uh, in biochemistry, uh, particularly uh, as you can see here this uh, a case of the Dutch with Dutch mutation, this is a case with Italian mutation. You see here the A beta amyloid deposition, and this is the thioflavin S for amyloid. So there is a per almost perfect correspondence, but uh, in the Italian uh, cases, uh, the, uh, label, uh, the immuno, uh, the, 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 the staining of amyloid latin vessel with thioflavin S was much less, so intense. And this, uh, uh, in our opinion, was the, uh, some, some indication of biochemical differences. Indeed, when we generate a synthetic peptide, a beta-40 peptide, with a different mutation, we also found differences uh, because, for instance, uh, in uh, um, uh, the studies uh, we, uh, uh, on the secondary structure uh, of the soluble form, so uh, um, uh, based uh, on uh, circular disc decrease spectroscopy, so there was a difference in the secondary structure, the Italian peptide uh, had a, a random coil structure, while the uh, um, Dutch peptide, a predominantly beta sheet structure, as you can see here. Um, so there were um, a biochemical differences, just an amino acid difference uh, was uh, uh, um, had an important impact uh, in the secondary structure, at least, uh, in, uh, of the soluble form. So, and this is the issue of pheno phenotypic molecular heterogeneity of sporadic genetic forms of CAA and CAA associated with AD. So, what we were trying to discuss before. So, also here we have the same a similar problem. And what we are doing is, uh, as I say, to extract amyloid from leptomeninges and from, uh, in, in uh, AD cases, from the cerebral cortex too, and to solubilize the amyloid species and do cell detox mass spectrometry. And uh, this is an example, so, uh, of what we see uh, with different uh, conditions. Uh, so we identify actually four different profiles. So I'm reporting only two here. 
And uh, as you can see here, uh, th this profile is related to, uh, let's say, 66% uh, of sporadic AD cases that we examine, and also the uh, um, genetic cases related to PS1 or PS2 mutation, and the behavior is similar in these cases, and we have some predominant species, as you can see here, A beta 42 or um, uh, uh, truncated form of A beta 42. As you can see, 42, 442, and so on. Um, conversely, uh, in a patient with a mutation in the APP, particularly in the A beta region, we have as predominant species A beta 40 and A beta 38, as you can see here. And uh, uh, I mean, when you extract uh, uh, material from tissue, from brain, so you never know, I mean, if you are losing something. But so, we have um, then some control. One of the control is immunistochemistry. This is an immunistochemical study with a specific antibody for A beta 38. And we found exactly what we found uh, uh, from the uh, with the biochemistry uh, in that uh, only cases with the uh, genetic forms of uh, sporadic fungophilic angiopathy or Alzheimer's disease with the a, a, a mutation within the A beta region contain A beta 38, while a, a mutation outside the beta region and also PSEN 1 and 2 mutation, Down syndrome, sporadic uh, AD, do not have this peptide. So the A beta uh, 38 is a specific peptide uh, for the uh, genetic forms of congophilic angiopathy and AD. Uh, with, uh, with important congophilic angiopathy. And uh, so this combination, I mean, this combination somehow can be regarded as, if you want, as different straining path strains of a beta assembly. And so, <coughs> and this is uh, really a consistent what uh, um, Stan Prusin published uh, two or three years ago. Uh, serial propagation of these distinct uh, strains of A beta prions from Alzheimer's disease patient. And by chance, uh, uh, he uh, injected uh, uh, this uh, uh, transgenic mice with the Arctic mutation, for instance, which is one of the mutation uh, within the A beta region with very prominent congophilic angiopathy and a sporadic case of, of AD or uh, AD with the Swedish mutation, which is uh, a mutation just uh, 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 before the A beta region. So, and the result was quite impressive because uh, uh, the um, uh, inoculum with the Arctic mutation uh, had an incubation time, the shortest incubation time, and uh, uh, in this case, they found A beta 38, which was absent uh, with the other inocula, and uh, the congophilic angiopathy was really most uh, prominent. I think my time is uh, uh, finished, so I have few, so just uh, two words about CAA-related inflammation, which can be induced by immunotherapy against A beta or can be spontaneous. And uh, uh, this is uh, the uh, uh, clinical diagnostic criteria that have been published uh, uh, last year, so I don't have the time to go through this. Uh, and. Uh, uh, I want just to say that uh, one of these, uh, so the, the Italy is leading, so Fabrizio Piazza is leading an international network uh, on uh, CAA-related inflammation. Uh, you can find, find this uh, on internet, uh, and this uh, network involves 13 different uh, centers uh, in the world, so with 35 um, uh, research groups, they collected up to now 250 different uh, uh, patients and samples. So it's a network that uh, uh, you have to join if you want to study in more details the mo molecular ba basis of CDA-related inflammation, uh, which is caused by the presence of uh, out antibodies against A beta. So, and this is, uh, of course, uh, sorry, uh, a condition that is very sensitive to steroid treatment, so it's very important to diagnose correctly this, uh, this uh, condition. So, thank you very much. I'm sorry 
for the time. And this is uh, uh, my group in Milan. Thank you.